Philly Sports Unfiltered. Guys, today we're talking some birds and we are back to Eagles training camp. And finally, guys, the pads have gone on and this is when we're going to really start to see what people's true performance is going to be and and it will start to really give us some insights into this coming year so the pads are now on and this is the first padded practice that the eagles have had for this training camp and the thing that i think that jumped out to pretty much mostly everybody uh, who was in attendance at this particular practice was that jordan davis is looking like an absolute beast we already know that he's just a hulk of a man He's incredibly strong and incredibly powerful, but today he was really blowing up offensive linemen. He was putting people on their ass. Uh, He was getting his bull rush going. He was working on additional techniques after practice. I mean, this guy is looking every bit of a good quality first round selection. And I think he's gonna be a stud this year. I mean, he's already working with the first team. Uh, And he seems to be turning everybody's head, whether it's people that are on the offensive line, uh, whether it's people that are on the defense with him. Everybody's looking at this kid and they're astounded by his size, by his strength and by his work ethic. And um, we've seen so far in Eagles training camp, uh, Jordan Davis has been working with Jason Kelsey after practice and trying to learn little tips from him on things that he can get better from, you know, the offense's perspective, like understanding how are they going to game plan against you? What are some of the things that you can do to try to counter things that good offensive linemen are going to do to you in the league? This is great to see when you're going to the other side of the ball and trying to get from the perspective of your opponent. And we all know that Jason Kelsey is a great mentor. And on the other side of the ball, uh, Kaiser White was commenting on Jordan Davis, and he's just like, man, this dude is huge. He's never played with somebody like that before. He's glad he's on their side, and he thinks he's just going to clog up everything. I think Jordan Davis is going to have a big year. I've said it before on this channel. I do think that Jordan Davis is going to end up kind of overtaking Fletcher Cox probably midway through this year. We'll probably see him beat him out in reps. And my personal belief is I think that Jordan Davis is going to surprise us in the pass rushing game because I don't think that he was giving much of a chance to rush the passer in college. Uh, And I think that he really has the tools to do so because it's not just that this guy is huge. He's huge and agile and fast. Like he's already has a great bull rush. He's working on other techniques. I I honestly think he's going to rack up a couple of sacks this year. Um, Second thing I want to talk about today is Jalen Rager. You know what? It's another year. It's just the same thing with this guy. Um, I just want him to be cut. I I want him to be off the team. I just find him to be a mental midget. Uh, You know, in addition to just not being very talented, not being worthy of a number one pick, he just can't get out of his own head. He just really can't. He's worried about what everybody else is saying, what everybody else is tweeting. He, you know, deletes his Twitter account like several times every season. He fights back and forth with reporters. He gets into argument with, you know, Joe Schmoes on Twitter, like people who aren't even a reporter, like just some random people. Uh, The guy, he's a little bit too sensitive to be able to be a professional athlete. And he, he thinks, he, he must think he's way better than he is. He must think that he's actually had some type of performance in the NFL because there was a tweet by John Clark and John Clark is just reporting the facts on what's been going on in training camp. Like Jalen Rager, another drop. He's getting out muscled and out maneuvered by DBs on the second team. And he's just said, yo, bro, you got to stop all this cap ass shit. Basically, you got to stop lying. And like Jalen, you have accomplished literally nothing in the NFL. You've done nothing. You've been a zero the entirety of your career. All you do is drop passes and disappoint. Uh, I mean, this guy has given nothing to our team since he's been drafted. He's given absolutely nothing. He's been a net negative because he's taken reps away from players that are way better than him. How many reps did this guy steal from Quez Watkins last year? I mean, it's it's an absolute travesty that they had him out on the field as much as they did. I'm tired of this guy. I'm tired of his attitude. He, he shouldn't even have a Twitter account. He should just be at training camp, zipping his mouth, busting his ass and trying to make something of himself. I'm sick and tired of this guy. 
I hope they cut him. I hope they trade him. Do whatever you have to do. Just get him off of the Eagles. I don't want to see stories or reports on this guy anymore. He, he absolutely sucks, and I don't want him on the team. Now, my last point I want to get into is, and to use an Andy Reid line, is Nick Sirianni has to do a better job. Uh, we've seen over the last three practices, the offense have been terrible. And a lot of people were saying, well, you know, before the you know pads come on, the defense always has the advantage. Okay, yeah, it's true. Defense normally has a leg up on the offense to start training camp. And yes, the defense knows the offensive playbook. Yes, you know, it's easier for a defense to gel. But at the same time, if you are a coach and you have a young quarterback, okay, this is the most important season of his entire career, of his entire life. And you're seeing him continue to struggle. You're seeing him continue to not have success. Give the man the reps that he needs to perform something. Make him stay on the field until they have some success and catch that positive momentum going forward. Like today's the first pad of practice, okay? This is Jalen Hurd's stat line from today. 9 of 11, 0 TDs, 0 INTs, okay? He basically couldn't get anything going. And it's been the same thing for the last three practices. He, he was doing a lot of check downs. He wasn't able to push the ball down the field. He's making some bad reads. He's missing receivers. Now, he, he's not getting a lot of reps. He's not getting a chance to get into a rhythm. You had an entire practice and the man threw 11 pra- passes. How is that possible? That's like 25% of one game. You know, like he's not even getting the amount of reps that he would get in a normal game. Like this is supposed to be practice. You should be getting more reps. And if you see your offense is struggling, you see your offense hasn't put points on the board in a week, put them in red zone. As I said, like the last two videos, put them in the red zone, say you are not coming off the field until you put points on the board. Point blank, period. Go on the field, do not come off until you score a touchdown. I don't care if it takes you 50 reps. I don't care if it takes you 100 reps. Go on the field, score a touchdown, have something positive to go into the next day, okay? Now, Nick Sirianni was saying, well, this year, you know, people were complaining about the length of the practice, and he said, well, you know, this year they're gonna get more reps. Well, so far it hasn't been true. Like, to this point, after four practices, last year Jalen Hurts had 102 reps, This year in 2022, he's only had 86 reps. And we see his numbers are worse. He's thrown less TDs. He's thrown more interception in less reps. So obviously the man is struggling. And and I frankly, I don't put it all on Jalen. Like obviously Jalen is his own man. He needs to perform when he's on the field. But, you know, in any sport, when a team is in a funk, when a player is in a funk, you know, some of it is is mental. Some of it is momentum that can carry through from one practice to the next. Sometimes you got to see the ball go in the hole. Sometimes you got to see the football, you know, cross the goal line. Like, you know, you need some positive juice to carry into the next day. And Nick Sirianni is not giving that to them right now. If, if they're producing nothing, Put them on the field. Your man has to get more than 11 reps in a practice. I'm sorry. 11 reps in a practice, that's that's ridiculous, Nick. Like, Nick, he absolutely has to do a better job. He has to get this offense rolling. We were not ready to start the season last year. It cannot happen again. It cannot happen again. But anyway, guys, that's my read. I know I'm making a lot of this, but it's just really frustrating that as a coach, You know, as in tune as Nick Sirianni seems to be with a lot of little things that can, you know, kind of push players' buttons, like he's completely neglecting, you know, the momentum and the trend that we're seeing right now from the offense, which is they're in a funk and we need to do something to change it. And I hope he wakes up. I hope he gives them more reps. I hope he finds a way to make sure that they have some success uh, so they can kind of vibe and feed off of that energy and, and start having some better practices because we cannot afford to come out of the gates as crappy as we did last year. We just can't do it. That's all I got for this one, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, go birds.